Good evening uh, from London. Uh, it's a bit uh, humid in London this evening. And hello from me, Dr. Dermot Hudson, the chairman of the British Group for the Study of the Duce Idea, chairman of the UK Korean Friendship Association, and official delegate of the Korean Friendship Association for the UK, and president of the Association for the Study of Songam Politics. I will put uh, this video on our UK KFA channel as well. Tonight I'm going to speak about the subject why there is so much hostility uh, to people's career. Uh, and I'm also going to at some point uh, make a video about uh, so-called leftist hostility towards the DPRK. And uh, a few years ago, I actually uh, wrote an article with the uh, title Why the Hostility to People's Career and Marshal Kim Jong-un. And I will put it in the, uh, a link to it in the comments on this uh, video uh, when, uh, when I've uh, completed the video. Uh, I'm making this video because I, you know, did a uh, Discord uh, discussion or lecture about a couple of weeks ago and someone asked afterwards you know why the hostility to the DPRK to people's career is so uh, in the media is uh, so uh, bad uh, and he rightly pointed out it actually goes beyond uh, that of the uh, you know towards the the former Soviet Union in the Cold War period and indeed the uh, hostility to people's career in the mainstream media but uh, also uh, uh, the the academic sphere as well uh, is all pervasive and uh, the as we've said before you know they turn out anti-DPRK slander and lies on an industrial scale. And I can remember back in the, the 80s and I think early 90s, uh, you would perhaps see one anti-DPRK article in the British press every year. And usually there would be a few uh, sort of uh, short hostile reports in the international news section uh, you, you know about different uh, events but quite short reports but you wouldn't get sort of um, articles day in day out but now uh, you know look at look at the uh, media and you can see uh, you know just Britain alone uh, you know four or five articles in different news outlets uh, each uh, each day uh, not to mention all ki all kinds of uh, stuff on YouTube uh, you know go into a bookshop and it would be full of uh, anti-DPRK books uh, booksellers and libraries here will not uh, stock any books uh, from the DPRK from the Foreign Languages Publishing House uh, in Pyongyang <laughs> they uh, do not stock my books or indeed uh, other books uh, by pro-DPRK writers in, in the West so it is uh, you know it is actually quite uh, extreme and as I say you know it's it's basically on an industrial scale uh, so you know let's look at some of the reasons why the mainstream media which after all is just a mouthpiece of the ruling class a mouthpiece of the big corporations uh, let's look at some of the reasons why they are so bitterly hostile to the DPRK and why they uh, vilify and demonize it on such uh, a, an industrial scale well first of all they hate the DPRK because it is a socialist country uh, it's one of a number uh, several socialist uh, countries in the world but the you know fact the DPRK is upholding 
socialism makes it uh, a target for the uh, venom and hatred of uh, uh, bourgeois ideologists and uh, uh, bourgeois journalists and in the past there used to be a big uh, anti-Soviet propaganda industry uh, in, in different uh, countries uh, partic both particularly in both Britain and the US you know used to have the Hoover Institution uh, turning out uh, uh, anti-communist uh, magazines and all, all, all this uh, kind of thing and of course now that uh, propaganda machine has been turned on the DPRK only uh, you know <laughs> uh, it would appear that this uh, propaganda machine has been greatly expanded and uh, also that no lie uh, is too big or too low to be told about uh, people's career and in their sort of campaign of demonization of course they mobilize uh, those traitors to the Juche motherland uh, you know, and they bring them out to slander the DPRK so you know that's um, one of the main reasons why the mainstream media sort of pump out lies about the DPRK all the time another reason uh, is uh, basically down to simple racism uh, the so-called orientalism and uh, you know there's uh, behind uh, a lot of propaganda of, against DPRK there's an element of racism uh, there is uh, a sort of belief yeah, you know amongst some of these people uh, you know t churning out this rubbish uh, there's a belief uh, in the superiority the alleged uh, or perceived superiority of European and North American culture you know ideas of uh, white supremacy and white uh, domination uh, so you know the DPRK in East Asian country is uh, demonized uh, for this reason as well and you know that's one of the reasons why it tends to come out uh, the worst uh, um, uh, off come off the worst uh, in the uh, propaganda war by imperialism against the socialist countries uh, you know why uh, sort of Cuba perhaps isn't targeted so much by the imperialist propaganda machine and and uh, also because the DPRK is a very independent country uh, it stands up for itself and of course in in the past uh, uh, you know when you had the British Empire the uh, British imperialists uh, would call any leader who stood up against their domination a mad dog and because the DPRK has defied imperialism uh, by building its own nuclear deterrent by uh, bu building ICBBMs uh, and by sticking to socialist principles uh, this is uh, seen as something very terrible by the imperialists and indeed uh, John Major the uh, unlamented former Conservative Prime Minister of Britain you know I think uh, a lot of people uh, watching this video are probably too young to remember him uh, actually described the DPRK as a country with undiluted sovereignty quote unquote so it's an independent country uh, which goes its own way and uh, you know the, the imperialists and the globalists hate it uh, for that fact it's a country uh, with its own identity uh, you know we, we see a, a world that uh, uh, is increasingly becoming a uh, monolithic where cultures are not perhaps being merged as someone put it but are actually being obliterated uh, by the coca-cola and uh, 
culture of uh, US imperialism, but, you know, the DPRK is maintaining its own uh, identity and it is hated for that. And it should also be remembered that, of course, the DPRK in the 1950s, under the leadership of uh, the great leader, President Kim Il-sung, uh, an ever-victorious armed world commander, uh, gave the American imperialists and indeed the uh, British imperialists and some others a real uh, sort of uh, bloody nose which uh, has always rankled deeply and they've always held a grudge against the DPRK because this uh, DPRK is uh, one of the few socialist countries that have actually engaged militarily uh, with uh, the US. Uh, the Soviet Union uh, did not, or certainly not on the scale that the DPRK and Vietnam did. So this has always made the DPRK a sort of target of hatred and vilification. In fact, it was always uh, given as a reason uh, for many years why uh, different Western countries wouldn't uh, grant diplomatic uh, recognition uh, to the DPRK. And, you know, some people watching this will still say, well, uh, you know, some of the other socialist countries don't come under this kind of uh, extreme attack. Well, you know, the other reason uh, is that the DPRK has not gone down uh, the route of uh, reform and opening up uh, like uh, some uh, socialist countries ha uh, have. Uh, it's maintaining real socialism and, uh, you know, the imperialists really hate it uh, for that. You know, they, they uh, really have a very intense hatred uh, for Duce socialism because it means they can't uh, worm their way in and destroy the system from within. Uh, and uh, with the USSR and the former uh, East European uh, socialist countries, uh, the US had adopted a policy of the so-called uh, peaceful transition or peaceful conversion uh, by which they infiltrated their ideology uh, and culture into these countries. In fact, I believe it was called the Dulles Plan or the uh, Kennedy uh, Doctrine. So they know that this approach uh, will not work uh, with the DPRK, which uh, is actually now the oldest socialist country in the world and uh, is uh, entering the fourth generation and that that really also makes uh, the uh, rulers of uh, different uh, different imperialist countries different capitalist countries uh, makes them uh, very very angry because uh, uh, you know there was a theory amongst uh, amongst the sort of bureaucrats and policy makers and academics in Western countries that, you know, socialism would only last um, uh, for one generation or two at the most. So it's really rankling them that the DPRK has uh, gone beyond uh, several uh, generations. It's entering the fourth generation and is sure to enter the fifth uh, generation. And of course, lastly, they hate the example that the DPRK sets before the world. Just imagine if uh, third, many third world countries adopted Duce and self-reliance and many small countries adopted uh, this. It would shut the imperialists and the multinationals out of markets. Uh, it would mean they wouldn't be able to uh, exploit cheap labour in uh, third world countries it would be a disaster for them anyway yeah for all the reasons i've outlined uh this uh in this uh, video uh, the 
Western mass media, the imperialist mass media, really hate people's career and they hate the Duce idea. Our job as uh, Duce followers and Songam idea followers and true friends of people's career is to defend the DPRK with no ifs and buts and with no compromises. Uh, so, you know, let's uh, uh, spread the, the word about the DPRK, the truth about the DPRK. Uh, I hope uh, you found this uh, video interesting. Uh, please subscribe uh, to my channel. And uh, also when we uh, finally are able to hold events, uh, you know, uh, please come to events of the UK Korean Friendship Association and British Group for the study of the Duce idea. Thank you for listening. Good evening and stay safe.